Godric the Grafted is known to be the weakest of the demigods. Not only is his royal blood considered diluted, but time and again he has shown cowardice in the face of adversity and took from others through grafting in an attempt to make himself stronger. While he considered himself the rightful ruler of the lands between, due to his parentage leading back to Godwin the Golden, it's clear that he's barely a demigod at all, perhaps only having a rune because it was passed down to him over time. That said, Godric himself is not the topic of this video. Instead, we will be talking about someone deeply tied to the grafted demigod. This formidable warrior is known throughout the Elden Ring community as one of the strongest, most fearsome encounters we will ever face. He has slaughtered countless tarnished, his power knows no bounds, and he attacks us when we are at our absolute weakest. Today, we will be thoroughly exploring the legend himself, the soldier of God, Rick. Wait, no, that's a typo. Okay, we're going to be talking about the soldiers of Godric. Okay, yeah, that's a lot less interesting. Whatever, we've covered all of the other knights, so yeah, we're doing this. Grab a comfy seat and let's get to it. Of course, if your current computer chair is feeling a little less than comfy, we encourage you to check out this month's sponsor, Noble Chairs. These days, I try not to promote anything on the channel that I wouldn't personally use or play, so I mean it when I say that my Elden Ring gaming chair from Noble Chairs is the most comfortable gaming chair I've ever owned. These premium chairs come in various styles that cater to the comfort experience you're looking for. I'm a fan of the Hero series because of the different special edition styles that are dedicated to games like Fallout, Skyrim, Doom, and more. They currently have the only Elden Ring gaming chair on the market, and it is beautiful. The detailed logo and gold accents make this chair feel so regal, and the symbol of ancient Erdtree incantations on the back is gorgeous. I truly believe this chair is the perfect gift for any Elden Ring fan. The convenient backrest locking function and movement options, as well as the Hero Series 40 armrests, can help you find the perfect positions for writing and gaming. Follow the link below to secure your own Elden Throne, and make sure you're comfortable while binging Elden Lore. In order to understand the tragedy of these disgraced knights, we must first look to their armor. The Godric Knight armor tells us, its left breast is emblazoned with a two-headed war axe, an emblem of the Golden Lineage. The knights surely boasted of their strength in days long gone. So by the wording of this description, we can assume that the members of Godric's forces no longer consider themselves powerful in terms of their standing in the lands between. The tree and beast surcoat worn by Godric's soldiers also drives this point home. Armor worn by soldiers loyal to Godric the Grafted. The surcoat depicts the distant Erd tree and the beast region, an emblem of the golden lineage. Both are symbols of glory now past. Godric's soldiers may have once been formidable, but their glory days are long behind them, and their own master is directly responsible for their shame. According to Kenneth Height, there were multiple instances of Godric acting in cowardice. First, we know he was part of an attack on Landell. It's hard to say exactly which battle this was, but if we assume he fought alongside Godfrey the Grafted, then ancient Dragon Knight Kristoff's ashes tell us it was the first siege of Landell. After he saw the battle going poorly, instead of fighting alongside his men, he stole the Mimic's veil from the royal capital and used it to hide among the women fleeing. This allowed him to escape with his life and his great room while Godfrey was captured and his men were slaughtered while retreating. The Godric soldier ashes even tell us, the soldiers who serve Godric the Grafted are what remains of the army that fled the royal capital of the Erd Tree. From here, he then went on to hide from Erdan behind the walls of Stormvale Castle and insult Melania, leading to a confrontation with her that led to him pleading for his life, bringing even further shame to the memory of Godwin the Golden and his lineage. At this point, it's probably becoming clear why these knights and soldiers would no longer brag about their strength. In fact, they likely continue to serve Godric only because of his bloodline. 
The soldiers and knights of Godric are a curious case when it comes to armies in the lands between. They can be found in various areas of Limgrave, but not a single one is found within Stormvale Castle, where Godric the Grafton has taken up residence. When we explore the castle, we're mostly met with exiled soldiers and banished knights, along with emaciated commoners, a troll, rotten strays, a lion guard, an omen, and a testament to the horrors of Godric's ancient practice, a grafted scion. Many believe that the reason these are the enemies we find protecting the castle is that Godric recruited the strongest cell sorts and creatures he could find. After all, Godric was obsessed with strength, as we can clearly see from his taking strength from others through the art of grafting. This implies that not only do Godric's original forces live with the disgrace of serving a cowardly lord, but what remained of them were appointed away from the castle, no longer considered strong enough by their master to defend him. They couldn't prove their superiority to the forces of Landell, so their fickle lord tossed them aside, relegating them to nothing more than mere foot soldiers, meant to walk his lands and defend anything he considered his. Clearly, when it came to masters, the Knights of Godric got the short end of the stick in the lands between, and they know it. Aside from the tree and beast Serco telling us that their glory days are long past, another item we can take from them along with one of their ashes of war, implies that Stormville Castle is not their original home, and they may long for a way back to their former glory. There is a mounted Godric Knight on a cliff southwest over the deathbed catacombs, whom upon death drops the ash of war, Golden Vow. This skill is passed down from antiquity among the knights of the royal capital. Raise armament aloft and pledge to honor the Erd Tree in battle, granting self and nearby allies increased attack power and defense. Why would a Knight of Godric be able to use this skill? Perhaps in the days before the Shattering, these knights served another lord, Godwin the Golden. We know that Godwin lived within the royal capital, so naturally his knights would have been stationed alongside him. In their time, they may have even been Landell Knights. The gilded great shield they drop tells us, the red tinge in the gold coat mirrors the primordial matter that became the Erd Tree, the color of homeward yearning. These knights likely followed Godric the Grafted out of Landell during the Shattering due to their allegiance to their original lord. As his descendant, they felt loyalty to Godric first and foremost, and unfortunately, this is how their loyalty was rewarded. They fought an unwinnable battle against the city they once called home, and bore the disgrace of both their own defeat and the cowardice of their lord, only to make it back to his castle and be told they were no longer worthy to defend its walls. It's no wonder these knights longed for the days where they could boast their strength, and want nothing more than to return to their home, the capital city, and once again bathe in the golden rays of the Erd Tree. In fact, we even find these soldiers and knights defending the Tower of Return, which provides a way back to the capital city, but their shame likely keeps them from using it themselves. The soldiers and knights of Godric easily have the worst lot of any army in the lands between. Even if you consider the clean rot knights, who are perpetually rotting, I would argue Godric's forces are still worse off, as the clean rots at least carry the title of strongest knights in the lands between, and feel a true sense of loyalty to Melania. For Godric's knights, their glory days are well behind them, and they likely feel no love or loyalty for Godric himself, just a sorrowful sense of duty to defend the once great bloodline of Godwin the Golden, no matter how badly Godric himself tarnishes the name. They are truly forsaken by their lord, their home, and grace itself. But still, they hold the line, even if they can never recapture the dignity they lost in their service to the poorest excuse for a demigod we encounter. Thank you for joining us for our dissection of Godric's Knights. This wraps up all of the standard knights found in the Lands Between, but we still plan on diving into the Carian Knights as well. There are also the Drake Knights but we believe our video on Yora and Eleonora already hit on all of the information currently known about them, so we really are rounding out every night faction in the lands between. 
Why do you think Godric's armies are not allowed within Castle Stormvale? Do you believe they were once soldiers of Landell? How many times did you die to the immortal soldier of God, Rick? Let us know your thoughts and stories in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you haven't already. YouTube isn't pushing Elden Ring content at the moment, so anything you can do to boost the channel is truly appreciated. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.